the angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to know the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In nomine Patri, sed Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. In tua egolatare Dei, et Dei glitifica, Dugo totum Helen. Iunica medes, et tisione causum em de gente non sancta, ma homen et in un quadro sorbo, Amen. Quetus Deus, forti fundum, guardae felicis, qualitricis, in cedo tum efficium edificus. Eme de lucem tuum veritatum tuum, nimsem et luxerunt, 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 imontum sanctum clomenit tabernacula tua. Et in tua idolatare Dei, et Dei politifica, et duum totum Helen. Confte uti vincitra, Deus, Deus meus, quetricis anima mea, ricorde cum tuo vans mea. Sperre in Deo, conima et hoc obitei bohini, salutare vocus mea, et Deus meus. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spirito et Santo, si coderat in principio et non che sempre, et in secula seculorum. Amen. In tuoi volatari Dei, ed in glitifica di un tutto meum, auditor nos mi nomine Domini, qui feci cielo e terra. Confiti od ervi potenti, viat e margiet sem vivi, in viat Michale e Cangelo, viat Ioanni Battista e Santis Vostris Petri, Paolo, viat Ioanni Maria, Viani, Omnus Sancti di Vubis Fratrens, Qui et cabini mis cogitazione bevo et opere, me occulta, me occulta, me a maxima occulta. Ed io prego beata Mariam sed Virginem, beata Michaelum Arcangelum, beata Ioanna Battista, Santos e Postros Pedro et Pong, beata Ioanna Mariam Viani, Amen, Santos e Vostra Trens, orrare con me, dormum del nostrum. Miseria a tutti i vini potenti, e usi del stato, distruis brutta te, vita e metà, no? Amen. Confiti, O Deo, Omnipotenti, Beate Maria Sempre Vigini, Beate Michaeli Arcangelum, Beate Ioanni Battiste, Sancti Apostoli Spedro e Paolo, Omnibus Sancti Settimi Pater, Quia te cabinis, cogitazione, verbo et opere, me occulta, me occulta, me maxima occulta, e io prego Beate Maria Sempre Vigini, Beate Michaeli Arcangelum, Beate Ioanni Battiste, Sanctus Apostolos Petrus Paulum, Omnes Sanctus et Te Pater, Orrari pro me, ad Dominum Deo Nostrum. Misericato Vestri, Potens Deus, et Missis Pecatis Vestri, Spiruca et Vos et Vita Metana. Ave, Lugensem, Solucionem, et Remissionem, Pecu Dorum Nostrum, Timiver Nomi Sanditotente, Misericus Dominus. Ave, Deus tu conversus per Vita Abisnas, et plens tu let habitor in te, Ostendi nobis Domine misericordia am Tua, et salutare Tuum per nobis, Domine exaudi razione meo, et clamores et te venien, Dominus obiscum, et cum spirito Tuo, orremus. Sacerdotes Dei, benedicite Dominum, Sancti et humiles corde, laudate Deum. Benedicite Omnia opere Domini, Domino, laudate et super exultate Eum in secula. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritu et Santo, sicur darat in principio et non quet sempre, et in secula seculorum amen. Sacerdotes Dei, benedicite Dominum, Sancti et humiles corde, laudate Deum. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, 
Krisa Raisan, Krisa Raisan, Kiria Raisan, Kiria Raisan, Kiria Raisan. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terpax hominibus bone voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, gracias acimus divi propte magnum gloria tua. Domine Deus, Rex Celestis, Deus Pater Onipotens, Domine Filio Unigenite, Jesus Christe, Domine Deus, Anius Dei, Filius Patris, qui tales peccatum mundi miserere nobis, qui tales peccatum mundi suscipe deprecationem nostram, qui seres et exeram Patris miserere nobis. Quoniam tu solus Sanctus, tu solus Dominus, tu solus Altissimus, Jesus Christe, Com Santo Spirito in gloria dei Patris. Amen. Exa vobis et con Spirito tuo. Orlebus. Deus, qui nos piazzi, blasi matire tue atque pontificis, annuo senemnitate rectificas, concede propitius, Ut cuius natalitia calibus Deus de metziam protectione galeamus. Per Dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum, Filium Tum, Pitecum de Vesalenia, Dunedetati, Spiritus Sancti Deus, per Romnia secula, seculorum. Amen. Ordeus. Pancete nos famulus tuus, praesimus Domine Deus, perpetua mente se popoli sanitate gaudere, et gloriose beate maglie sempre vicini in sita gestione, e presenzi liberali di stizia, ed eterna perfume letizia. Ecclesia tue calcimus domini pregis locatus ad mite, udis luxis ad vesis asibus et rolibus universis, securiti vi servi et libitate. Er nobilum nostrum, Iesum Christum, Filium Tum, videi cum divina regna ad unitatis virtus sancti Deus, per romnia secula, seculorum, Amen. Lexio Epistole Viazzi Pari Apostoli et Corinthios. Fratres, benedictus Deus et Pate Domini Nostri, Iesu Christi, Pate Misericordiarium et Deus Tolsius Consolationis, qui consulatur nos in omni tribulazione nostra, ut possimus et ipsi consulari eus, qui omni presciura sunt per exhortationem, que exhortamur et ipsi ad Deo. Quoniam sicut abundant passiones Christi in nobis, iter et per Christum abundant consolatio nostra. Sive autem tribulamo pro vestra exhortazione et salute, sive consolamo pro vestra consolazione, sive exhortamo pro vestra exhortazione et salute, que opratuo tolerantiam eriarundum passionum, quas et nos patimur, ut spes nostra firma sit pro vobis, Scientes quod sicut soci passionem estis, sic eritis et consolationis, in Christo Iesum Domino nostro. Deo gratias. Gloria et honor de coronasti eum, et constituisti eum super opera mani ontuarum Domine. Beatus vire quis time Dominum, emandatis eius cupidinis, Potens in terra erit semine ius, generatio rectorum benedicetur, gloria e divizia in domo eius, et justitia eius malet in seculum seculi. Nominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, sequentia sancti vangelii secundo Meteum. Gloria a Tibi Domine. In ino tempore dixit Jesus isi Christuis, si quis vult post me vinere, ad neget semet ipsum, et volat crucem suam, et sequatur me, cui ene volverit animam suam salvam facile, perde daiam, cui autem bedinerit animam suam propte me, in vedie daiam. Quid enim prodes mohomini simundum universum lucretur, anime verus sue detrementum patiatur? Aut quam David homo commutationem pro anima sua? 
Filius enim hominis ventum est in gloria patris sui comanginis suis, et tum credit uniquique secundum opera eius. Laus tibi Christi. On this, the Feast of St. Blaise, Bishop of Sebastian and Martyr. The lesson is from the Epistle of Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we also may be able to comfort them who are in all distress by the exhortation wherewith we also are in all distress, by the exhortation wherewith we also are exhorted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so also by Christ doth our comfort abound. Now whether we be in tribulation, it is for your exhortation and salvation, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation, or whether we be exhorted, it is for your exhortation and salvation, which work is the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer that our hope for you may be steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you be also of the consolation in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the Holy Gospel is a continuation of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For he who would save his life will lose it. But he who loses his life for my sake will find it. For what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world but suffer the loss of his own soul? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will render to everyone according to his conduct. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hor motis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass on this, as we said, the Feast of St. Blaise, Bishop of Sebast who was martyred on this day in the year 316, 316 AD, condemned by the, uh, uh, by the governor Agricolaus on the orders of the Emperor Licinius, who had instituted a final persecution, as it were, of the Christians before peace would come to the empire after his defeat by Constantine. According to tradition, Blaise was a physician, a noted healer, who exercised this ministry of healing in conjunction with that of his vocation to the ministerial priesthood. He was famed for his charity, for his solicitude of the health of his people. He was known too uh, to be uh, popular with the animals. It is said that uh, he spent, uh, he preferred to uh, live a solitary uh, life so that he was uh, based outside the city, uh, living in, the, in a cave in the woods, in the forest, and there he would be assisted by the animals. When the soldiers came to arrest the bishop after the edict of Licinius uh, enacted by the governor, Agricolos, uh, they found uh, the bishop uh, secluded in the forest and took him back to the city there to face trial. It is said en route that an elderly woman complained to the bishop that a wolf had taken her pig. It is said that Blaise spoke to the wolf 
who surrendered the pig back to the elderly woman. And in token of uh, gratitude and affection for the bishop's intervention, the elderly woman gifted to him two long taper candles to give light to him in his dark cell. More about those candles in a moment. He was brought before the governor, there sentenced to death uh, for being a Christian. But first he was scourged with wire combs, his uh, flesh uh, torn with metal wire combs, before then being taken to prison and there to be beheaded. En route, according to legend, en route from trial, uh, after sentencing to the prison, a Christian woman ran up before the bishop carrying a son whom she placed at his feet, whom she believed to have died choking on a fishbone. St. Blaise interceded, prayed, and the boy was miraculously healed. And so it is to this day that ordinarily we would have the blessing of throats at the end of Mass, invoking the intercession of St. Blaise and placing two tapered candles made of the sign of a cross either side of the neck of those being blessed. And there, my brothers and sisters, is the tradition concerning St. Blaise. What, my brothers and sisters, may we extract from this beautiful legend concerning this saint? In the first instance, let us recall that he was famed as a healer. Now, what passed for being a physician in the fourth, early 4th fourth century Lesser Armenia in the city of Sebast is anyone's guess. Quite to what level uh, of uh, uh, medicinal prowess uh, the bishop was known for, or surgical prowess, uh, or just faith healing prowess, uh, that's now lost to the mysteries of time. But he was, of course, not just a physician of bodies, but also too, and perhaps more importantly, a physician of souls. And it is perhaps chiefly that for which his example and testimony is remembered to this day. A physician of souls. Yes, indeed, for sure, he was perhaps obviously gifted in the healing of bodily ailments. But we notice that in the intervention with the little boy choking on a fishbone, that Blaise reacts first by praying. And his prayer is efficacious enough that the boy is healed. How often, my brothers and sisters, do we in times of distress, times of anxiety, how often do we in times of illness turn first to God before we start ringing the NHS helpline, consulting a friend, reaching for the medicinal cabinet, how often do we turn to God first in prayer when difficulty arises, when something uncomfortable occurs? Now, there's nothing to say, just because the legend doesn't mention it, that St. Blaise perhaps didn't afterwards touch the throat of the boy and dislodge the fishbone. Who knows? It doesn't matter. The principle is that St. Blaise at once turned first toward God. In this, of course, fulfilling the first of the great commandments. 
to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. St. Blaise, living a life of charity that is in communion with God, turned to him first. We should, my brothers and sisters, as Christians, all of us, likewise, be thinking of God first and foremost in our hearts and minds at all times, and at least striving to do so at all times. Such we call living in holy fear, which of course does not mean to live afraid of God but rather to live aware of God's presence. Doing so enables us to avoid sin and enables us to grow in holiness and communion with God. Remember, my brothers and sisters, that this is the whole point of our lives as Christians communion with God. And this is why our Lord says in the Gospel today, He who loses his life for my sake will find it. For what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world but suffer the loss of his own soul? A great many of us if we are honest, do not put God first in our hearts and minds, do not carry him first in our thoughts and minds. And many of us strive and expend our energies in the pursuit of material comfort in this life before we give consideration to the state of our soul. Just think about that for a minute. The vast majority of us care more for our material comfort than we do for God. And the evidence for this is in the fact that the vast majority of us do not think of God and do not turn to him first in all things. You see, communion may be expressed with another word, fellowship or indeed friendship. In this pre-season of Lent known as Jessima, we might spend some time analysing our communion with God, our relationship with him, and ask ourselves, do I live my life in fellowship with God? Do I live my life in friendship with God? When something exciting happens in my life, do I turn to God first to tell him to give thanks, to share my joy? Or do I text a friend or ring a friend and share my joy with them first? When something uncomfortable happens in my life, do I turn first to God in prayer and ask his assistance? Or do I 
text or ring and contact a friend first and share with them my sorrow or my anxiety. In all the decisions that I may make in at any given point on any given day, how often in my decision making process is my first thought to consult God? How often do I go about the business of my affairs and never once think of God? Unless or until I am prompted by some meme on social media by popping a glance in my mind, by popping a glance at the crucifix on my wall, or on a prayer card, discarded on a sideboard. Perhaps I notice the spine of the Bible on my shelf. Maybe then I think of God. But in the ordinary, normal routine of my life, how often do I think of God? How often do I think to consult him? How often do I think to include him? How often do I think to ask him? And when those decisions come, as they do throughout the day, to choose righteousness or sin, to serve another rather than myself, to express sacrificial love or self-satisfaction. How often do I, perhaps then, prompted by temptation, Think momentarily of God, dismiss that thought, and enact the sin. And in my heart and in my head, do I think to myself, that sin has ramifications, that sin distances me from God. That sin prevents me from realising God's generous grace. That sin prevents me from availing myself and cooperating with God's help. Remember, and I know I've said it several times in the last couple of weeks, but it's a really fundamental, important principle and lesson to learn. Sin distances us from God. Not him from us, but sin creates a barrier between us and him. For he that is all holy cannot commune with that which is tainted. Every time we sin, we taint our souls in such wise that we distance ourselves from God. We create an invisible barrier which prevents the fullness of his grace and mercy and love from reaching us, touching us and being operative within us. 
And the trouble is, my brothers and sisters, is that we go day by day accumulating sins. Building higher and higher that barrier. Distancing ourselves from him. And then when real problems happen, we expect miracles to occur. We who have so distanced ourselves from God, but have so convinced ourselves that these little sins don't matter. Physician, heal thyself. You know, there is an easy remedy to this situation to prevent this build-up of barrier and distance between ourselves and God. And that's to practice self-examination at the end of every day before retiring to bed. To think back on the day and try to recognize those occasions when we did not love God as we ought. Often these will be indicated by the way in which we did not love our neighbor. But having recognized these faults, we should then confess them, remembering and trusting the words of the psalmist. A humble and contrite heart the Lord will not despise. And by making a genuine act of contrition and believing wholeheartedly in the promises of Christ, trusting in the fruits of his passion, death and resurrection, realized by our baptism, we should know God's forgiveness. And thus, go to our rest with an easy conscience and with a grateful heart knowing that we commend ourselves to sleep in communion, in fellowship, in friendship with God. We see also in the life of St. Blaise a desire for that true communion with God by his taking himself to live outside of the city. Now whether or not and what it means to suggest that he had a relationship with the animals like Dr. Doolittle is neither here nor there. One suspects that simply refers to the charitable nature of his being. And animals, remember, have a sixth sense about human character. Because of the charity, charitableness of his being, no doubt, animals were not afraid of him. No doubt he was able to treat them as though tame. Perhaps even he was blessed to be able to communicate with them in some way. After all, 
we all think, my brothers and sisters, ourselves, that we are really communicating with our pets when we talk to our dogs and our cats, to our budgies and our hamsters. We all think we are communicating. We don't actually know if they really understand what we're saying. But certainly intonation and inflection, especially in command or in praise or in affection, they certainly respond. The point here is that St. Blaise carried about him such a state of being that even wild beasts grew close to him, were not afraid of him, perhaps would even do his bidding. In other words, my brothers and sisters, he conveyed about him something of the Creator, about his bearing about his nature. He was not threatening, but welcoming. After the manner of our Lord, one is certain that he expressed humility. Now this bearing, this attitude, of course, though remarkably noticed about animals, was also true of people. That they went and sought him, that they came to him with their troubles and their afflictions, that they appreciated him, such that he was given gifts to sustain him in his semi eremitical life. They were drawn to him as souls indeed are drawn to Christ. The question then we might ask ourselves is, are people drawn to Christ through me? What is there, or is there, anything about my manner, my demeanour, my bearing, my character that makes me open, approachable, that makes me someone that people think to turn to in times of anxiety or distress? or even in times of joy? Do people search me out to share with me significant things in their lives? Do people come to me with problems? Do people come to me for advice? Do people come to me seeking my opinion? Do people come to me for comfort, for consolation? Do I, like St. Blaise, have the bearing and manner and humility and charity of Christ about me, such that souls are drawn. Now remember, my brothers and sisters, here we're not talking about ego. We're 
but consider. Do people ask on a regular basis for your prayers? Do you get the sense that people approach you in times of distress because of your faith? Do you see and do you recognize that these opportunities, when they occur, are opportunities for you to manifest Christ to them? To share your faith with them by expressing your trust in God. By promising them your prayers. By assuring them of your care and concern for them. Do you offer help? Are you known to be someone to come to? when someone needs help. These, my brothers and sisters, are signs and occasions and promptings for us to realize our true selves in Christ. by humbling ourselves to allow him to serve those in need. Again, something for us to think about today and every day. And finally, note the absolute trust and confidence in God by St. Blaise. That he is steadfast in faith to the end. That he bears the torture because he trusts in God, because his desire is on that final prize of eternal life. Because he knows that nothing in this life is comparable to that in the next. And when life in this life is threatened, he sees it as nothing compared to the realization of eternal life with God. Do you have a sincere and genuine desire in your heart to be with God? such that whatever trials and tribulations befall you in this life, you are ready to bear and endure them all for the sake of the kingdom of God? Do you trust in God such that in times of trial and tribulation, you are comforted by the knowledge that God is with you and that you have been enabled to share and thus to offer in your suffering yet a sacrifice of love like that of Christ upon the cross for us. When you suffer, do you think to unite yourself with him upon the cross? 
for the sake of others. Do you bear and endure suffering meekly, humbly, so as not to distress those around you, but rather to manifest your trust and faith in God? Or do you fear death? You see, as Christians, we have no need to fear death. Because if we, living now, are in communion with God, we know that we will be in communion with him hereafter. And so our thoughts would return to our first question. After the manner of St. Blaise, do you turn to God first? What does it profit a man if he gain the whole world but suffer the loss of his own soul? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tuo. Ordemus. In veni David servum meum, oleo sancto meum sieum, manus enim meum seriabitore, et brachium meum confortabit eum.
Ronia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tuo, sos in corda habemus sanct Dominum, gracias a calmus Domino Deo nostro, dignum et justum eis. Vere dignum et justum et eicum et salutar de nos divi sempre et ubitre, gracias agile, Domine Sancte Pater, onipotens et temi Deus. Pe Christum Dominum Hostum, Eque me start in form laut et angeli adorant Domine actionis tremit potestates, Ceni cerunque vetute de beati seraphim, Socius ut actioni concelebran, Cum quibus in nostris voci tut imiti ubeste e precamur, Suplici confessione di genes. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabeota, plenis un celi et terra gloria tua, usanda in excelsis. Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, usanda in excelsis.
Dove scopo i peccatori più. Per romia secula seculorum. Amen. Orle, precenti salutaribus moniti divine seduzioni formati, audemus dice. Pate noste le quiesi cedi sanctificetum omen tuum, adveni ad regnum tuum fir colontas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Panem nostrum quadrianum da nobis hodie, et dimite in nobis debita nostra, Sicur et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentazione, sed libra nos a mal. Per romia secula seculorum. Amen. Pax a Domini sit semper vobiscum et cum spirito tu. Annus Dei, qui tali spettato mundi miserere nobis. Annus Dei, qui tali spettato mundi miserere nobis. Annus Dei, qui tale spettato mundi, dono nobis pace. Domine, non sending. Domine non sendingus, Domine non sendingus. Ecce agnus Dei, ecce equitualit peccatu mundi. Domine, non sum dignus sud intre suttectum meum, se tantum dic verbo, et sen navitur anima mea. Domine, non sum dignus sud intre suttectum meum, 
Sitt hent om dig med på et sende av ditt år er liv av meg. Om dag med en annen som din, og så din tre så tenkt om meg om. Sitt hent om dig med på et sende av ditt år er liv av meg. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online are unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament. We invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive Thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though Thou wert already there, I embrace Thee and unite myself wholly to Thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from Thee.
as you wish it, Domine, in capite eus coronam de lapide precioso. Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tu. Ardemus. Ec nos communio Domine porce da crimine, et in accidente beato plasio matire tu atque pontifice, celestis remedii facia tese consortes. Per Domino nostrum Iesu Christum filium tu, qui te cum vive da regna ad unanitati Spiritus Santi Deus, per ogni secula seculorum. Amen. Arlemus. Sum se spavne salutis nostre sursidis, da quaesmus veiate ai margies, quaesmus nobile Deus nostre, ut quos divine tribuis participazione cadere, umanis non sinis de via cieli periculis. Per nobilum nostrum, Iesu Christum filium tu, Qui te cum vive de regna ad unanitati Spiritus Sancti Deus, per ogni secula, seculorum. Amen. Dominus obiscum, et cum Spirito tuo, ita e missa est, Deo gratia. Sed nomen Domine benedictum ex aut nunc dusque in secula, aut dori nostrum in Domine Domini, cui feci celum et terram, benedicat vos omnipotens Deus. Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tuo, initium sancti evangelii, secundo mio Padre, gloria a ti di Domini. In principio et verbum et verbum erat apudeum et eus erat verbum, hoc erat in principio apudeum, omnipris sum factus sum is simso ipso factum is nihil co factum est. In iso vita erat e vita erat lux hominum lux in tenebris luce le tenebre e non comprehenderum. Fuit homo bis sucedeo con nomino raciu manes. Hic venit in testimonium ut testimonium vivere du lumine, domna estretum per illum. Non eret in illum, sed ut testimonium vivere du lumine, erenum svere qual lumine, omnem hominem verientim in hoc mundum. In mundo et arti, mundo spirit sum factus est, mundo sum non coniogi, in propria venit in sum non luceperum, qual qual autem luceperum deum despole stati filios de fieri, quis vivendi nomine eius, qui non risanguinibus, nec volontati panis, nec volontati viri, se nec deum nati sum. Et verbum carum factum est, et habitabit in nobis et minimus gloria meus gloria in quasi unigenite a patre, per un grazie veritatis. Neo gratias. Amen. If you look grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, if you look grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, if you look grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail, our life, our sweetness and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. 
O God, who art our refuge and our strength, through thy mercy on thy people who cry to thee, and by the intercession of the glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and all thy saints, in mercy and goodness hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners, and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell, Satan, and all wicked spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. May Saint Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Stenning, pray for us. Saint Wilfred of York, pray for us. Saint Richard of Chichester, pray for us. Saint Louisa of Alfriston, pray for us. Our Lady of Walsingham, pray for us. Our heavenly patron saints, Pray for us, our holy guardian angels, pray for us. Our Lady, Queen of Heaven, all the angels and saints, pray for us.